Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be doing some experimenting with the family from the Aberdeen pig farm. I have had so much fun diving into the secrets and the mysteries of this interaction that you can have in RDR2. And today we're going to be trying some really fun stuff with these two characters. So in case you guys need a quick refresher on the Aberdeen pig farm, it's near Pleasance in Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's very close to the border of Roanoke Ridge, and it's owned by siblings Bray and Tammy Aberdeen. And if you come up to this house for the first time in Red Dead Redemption 2, you're going to be invited inside by what looks to be a very friendly couple offering you food, hospitality, drinks, and shelter. So it seems very innocent on the surface, but as you sort of go inside, you start to figure out that things are a little bit creepier than they seem on the surface. For starters, the couple that you think is husband and wife, they don't seem to be like a match as you can tell. Um, also, the husband sends you upstairs to check on who again you think is the wife at the time who is presumably getting dressed and getting ready for the dinner that she's gonna be serving. That's a little bit strange. When you sit down at the dinner table itself, the two start interacting with each other in a very creepy way. You then find out that instead of being husband and wife, they are brother and sister. So you've got this really weird like incest vibe going on here. And from there, you're presented with a couple of options. You can stay at the dinner table and you can consume the meal and the drinks that they're offering or you can choose to get up and completely leave. Now, if you choose to get up and leave, you're gonna be presented with a couple of different scenarios here. You could sit back down at the table and then things will proceed as normal, or you can leave and you can come back a second time and you'll still get a very similar sort of outcome where you will eventually end up trying either the stew or having a drink, and this will lead to you either passing out or it'll lead you, I, I don't know if poison's the right word, but you're basically just like put in a daze and they end up robbing you. Like you can see that they start rummaging through your pockets and you wake up, I think it's a couple hours later, depending on when you arrive at the house, in the pouring rain in a thunderstorm in this pit of corpses and bodies. And as you've noticed, you've lost all of your money. So this is very creepy, obviously. And you've noticed here that in the body pit, some look to be relatively new, like it could have been last week. Some look like it could have been last year. So who knows how long these people have been doing this. However, you do have the option to return to the house so that you don't lose all of your money. That wouldn't be good, clearly. So upon entering the house, you're gonna find Tammy in the kitchen who is actually wielding a kitchen knife. And if you don't act fast enough, she will insta-kill you. So you can either kill her right then and there, or you can lasso her. And that's the important part of our testing today, because you actually cannot lasso Bray. I'm not sure if it's because Rockstar just didn't want him to be moved around, or if because physically he was just too large enough to be lassoed and carried by Arthur. That would certainly be an impressive feat. But nonetheless, you can take out Bray. And by the way, if you loot him, this dude is like a walking like candy store. He's got candy bars and chocolate and beef on him. So I thought that that was kind of funny and you can actually start to explore the rest of the house too, which there really isn't a need. And the funny thing is, is you don't have to go back and get your money. Like if you were to walk away, you would lose everything. So I already knew where the money was because I had interacted with this couple so many times. There's really one creepy thing that you can open in the top of the house. It's this dresser called an armoire, and if you open it, there's actually like this skull and bones on the inside. I don't know who that is. Maybe it's their mother, maybe it's their parents. They seem to reference them a lot, and Tammy, who we'll actually be doing some stuff with a little bit later, mentions her a lot as well. So from there, you're pretty much free to grab your money. However, I wanted to see what would happen if we actually took Tammy back to that pit of bodies. You know, would she start freaking out? Would she have some sort of crazy reaction? Would she offer us more money or maybe tell us like, hey, let me go and I'll, you know, show you where X, Y, and Z is. That's what I wanted to find out in this video today. So I wanted to wait till daytime because it would have been a little bit easier to see and while we had her hog tied on the ground, she said, you know, I'm not a hog, let me go. Um, but then she didn't say anything for a bit. So once again, I waited till it was daytime. 
And uh, I'll actually let you guys just take a listen to the audio that she ends up saying when we pick her up and we take her to the body pit. Listen to this. Where are you taking me? Put me down! Of a bitch. Where the hell are you taking me? What a tough guy kidnapping a lady. Sorry, not here, Mama. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. So you can see that as we are threatening to drop her in this pit of bodies, that she's been placing people for years now. Rockstar gave her unique dialogue. They anticipated that characters like myself would end up bringing her back to where we originally got dropped off. And that is actually kind of cool that Rockstar went into that level of detail in order to describe this scenario. So I ended up dropping her off and I realized that I hadn't gotten my money yet. And I was just going to drop her and leave her there. I had assumed that she was going to despawn. But it turns out that that wasn't the case. I was able to walk all the way back to the house. I was able to go grab my money and then I was able to return. And believe it or not, she was still there. Again, I expected her, like the game to despawn or something like that. Not the case. Now, I was sort of wondering if I would get any future lines of dialogue. And as she was tied up, we didn't get anything like that. So my next experiment was to untie her and to see what would happen. Because she no longer has her kitchen knife, you know, would she pull out a hidden gun? Would she start to attack us? Would she run back to the cabin? And surprisingly, the answer was neither of those things. It almost sort of looks like she wanted to get into like a fist fight, but would never approach me. Would just sort of like shimmy to the left and the right. And so I said, okay, this is not going anywhere. Let me just lasso you back and put you back in the body pit. And uh, from there, I was pretty much unsure what to do. Uh, there really isn't a conclusion to this story after you've found the money. So I figured the best thing to do would just be to shoot around her a little bit, maybe give her a little bit of a scare before I finally ended up connecting on one of the shots. And that is the end of the story. So that right there is what happens if you bring uh, Tammy Aberdeen from the Aberdeen pig farm to the body pit in which they left you and countless other victims from years past. I would say this is an ultimate case of karma. And uh, again, the, the mystery and the creepy stories and the spooky nature of this place still to this day fascinates me. And just the stories and the things you can do with this uh, are really cool. Now, quick update to this story. I was actually doing some more research on both Bray and Tammy as I was editing. And it turns out that that special audio that we heard where she starts crying and panicking and apologizing to her mother implied that she and her brother Bray actually murdered their mother. And we actually hear both of them talk about their mother and father at the dinner table. And it does get kind of awkward when they bring it up. Take a listen to this. You know what? This place used to be a pig farm when we was, when we was kids. Before we lost our ma and pa. Horrible business. Horrible. But we still got each other. Ain't that right, honey pie? And we still know how to have a hog killing time. 
So this is something that I totally overlooked. I didn't know that it implied that they were the ones that murdered their mother and their parents. I just thought they had passed away. So I guess that does sort of tie everything together and it just makes this story even that much creepier. Now, after I was done at the shallow grave, I did end up returning to the house just to see if I could find anything extra. And that little cabinet that we opened up earlier, I really do believe that that now is the bones of their parents. Like, why would they put it inside a cabin in their house uh, if they didn't have some like special significance to it? And there's also like a painting of their mother and father right next to that too. So it has to be them. And that just adds to the creepiness of this entire saga. So as always, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this entire story, what we've done in this video today. And also let me know what you'd like to see me do going forward in the future. I think I have a couple more ideas of some things that I could do to these two Aberdeen characters, but I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.